Hey, car buffs, hold on to your seats. Something big is shaking up the automotive world. Tesla's stock prices are taking a dip, while GM is making waves with their latest announcement. Brace yourselves for the unveiling of GM's groundbreaking zero-emission engine, ready to kick traditional electric and gas guzzlers to the curb. Picture this, a whole new way of powering cars that's eco-friendly and futuristic. GM's CEO is shouting it from the rooftops, calling it a game-changer. But what's the fuss all about? Well, GM has been on a quest for an alternative to electric vehicles for ages. And guess what they stumbled upon? Compressed air technology. Sounds fancy, right? But it's not entirely new. Think back to the 1800s when compressed air was used in some trains and trams. Paris even gave it a whirl. But then, poof, it vanished into thin air as internal combustion engines took over. Fast forward to the 2010S, a French car maker named PJO had a light bulb moment. They combined compressed air with good old internal combustion engines, creating a hybrid that's greener than grass without the hassle of batteries. Sure, those prototypes didn't zoom far, but they got tongues wagging in the car world, especially at GM. They saw potential. They saw a chance to shake things up, but they also knew it needed work. Lots of it. So, while everyone's hyping up EVs, GM quietly started tinkering with compressed air technology alongside their usual electric and gas-powered projects. Buckle up, folks. We're in for one heck of a ride into the future of cars. So, with that in mind, it's high time for us to tackle a very practical question. And that is, how do compressed air vehicles function? Compressed air vehicles function very differently from regular engines and EVs. You see, instead of having a conventional piston-driven engine or an electric motor, compressed air vehicles utilize specially designed pneumatic engines, also known as compressed air engines. These engines are, from a mechanical standpoint, very similar to regular internal combustion engines. The engine uses pistons just like petrol-powered ones do. However, unlike combustion engines, the pistons of a pneumatic motor are connected to a spring. Generally speaking, the engine is very similar to internal combustion engines and can therefore use a wide array of technical solutions, shortening the development cycle, which is what also drew GM towards this concept. With that in mind, it's time to answer the most intriguing question. What are the benefits of compressed air against EVs and ICE vehicles? Well. The most notable benefit is, of course, the fact that it is 100% pollution-free. It's just pressured up air, meaning that there is no environmental damage being done while it functions. As a result, compressed air engines solve one of the biggest issues regular combustion engines have, and that is direct pollution of the environment. Compressed air engines also beat out EVs in this regard, as making a compressed air engine is far cheaper and requires no rare earth materials, much unlike batteries or electric motors. Not to mention that powering EVs is also not quite green, as the grid is still mostly reliant on fossil fuels to produce electricity. Speaking of making compressed air engines, another key benefit over internal combustion engines is the cost of production. Since compressed air engines endure considerably lower pressures than gasoline or diesel engines, Producing them means that there will be a lesser need for strong and hardened steel or metal. Oh, and also, it goes without saying that the running costs of compressed air engines are simply unrivaled. Compressed air is much cheaper than fuel or electricity, and it's also much easier to acquire. Not to mention that these engines will be 100% future-proof, as they don't waste anything. They just use pressurized air that, after it exits the chamber, remain structurally unchanged. However, as potent as they sound, compressed air engines have a few drawbacks that keep them from being developed and used on a wider scale. Are there any drawbacks to this technology? Unfortunately, there are a few glaring issues that arise from using compressed air engines, which made them quite situational and even borderline useless in the past. In a proper, organized way, the first problem is the fact that compressed air engines are extremely underpowered. Pressurized air has a very low energy density, which considerably lowers its potency. Plus, due to them having light components and them not producing high amounts of pressure, 
The torque of such engines is extremely lackluster, which makes them much less usable in the real world. However, the biggest issue that compressed air engines face is the fact that they are extremely inefficient. And while this might sound inessential, seeing how compressed air is virtually free, this couldn't be further from the truth. Most prototype compressed air vehicles that have been developed have a range of only 140 kilometers, which is less than 100 miles. This means that first of all, you would have to fill it up constantly, and second of all, you couldn't reliably go on a moderately long trip, let alone a long one. Finally, there's the question of safety. Most prototypes used regular steel air tanks for storing pressurized air due to a lack of a better solution. This meant that the car, which was already gutless in itself, would be prominently less potent due to increased weight, while also being susceptible to explosions if the tanks were damaged. As you were, after all, sitting on a bunch of pressurized gas. That said, GM has been working extremely hard on ridding this technology of its glaring issues, and they have been quite successful at it. First of all, the problem of the car's power has been solved with the introduction of new high-press air tanks. These high-pressure tanks compress the air even further, which translates into higher cylinder pressure. As a result, GM's new compressed air prototype achieves performance figures that are pretty comparable to regular gasoline engines. Sure, the torque isn't quite there yet. However, they're still powerful enough for a normal commuter vehicle. Furthermore, GM has also found a way to extend the vehicle's range. How? Well, by turning the vehicle's chassis into one large compressed air reservoir. However, this requires the vehicle to be specifically developed with compressed air engines in mind. When will this technology be implemented? Well, the answer to that question is incredibly complex. However, there is a very solid possibility of these engines entering mass production in the next few years. This is because, as can be concluded, GM has truly invested itself in making this engine a reality. They keep researching and developing solutions to many existing problems and are incredibly devoted to creating a truly fantastic product that would revolutionize the automotive world entirely. That said, it would be naive of us to believe that GM is doing this out of the goodness of its heart, as it is not. GM understands all too well that the days of internal combustion engines are numbered, and they still don't have a foothold in the EV market. But as good as this all sounds, this isn't the first time a major manufacturer tried implementing compressed air into vehicles. As we've already mentioned, PJO has 10 or so years ago made a hybrid version of their PJO 2008 crossover. However, instead of using electric energy, this vehicle combined an internal combustion engine with compressed air. Unfortunately, though, PJO silently abandoned this project soon after it was conceived. Despite the very good initial results, there were no explanations given except that PJO said they didn't find the project profitable enough, which frankly doesn't make sense. So why did they abandon it? It's anyone's guess. However, we believe that it has to do with large oil companies as such an engine developed and produced on a large scale could potentially run them out of business. And while this might sound far-fetched to some, it wouldn't be the first time that oil companies did something like this. Back in the mid-90s, Stanley Allen Meyer developed the water fuel cell, which when fitted to a car, could effectively make it run exclusively on water. After Meyer went public with his invention, he was constantly pressured by large oil firms into quitting his development of the water engine and confessing that it was just a fraud. Meyer resisted and kept fighting oil giants while also searching for a company that would fund the further development of his water fuel cell. On the 20th of March 1998, Meyer, alongside his brother, went to a dinner with two Belgian investors. At one point, Meyer ran out of the restaurant screaming that the two businessmen poisoned him. He passed away a mere minute later on the pavement in front of the restaurant with his brother by his side. Sure, this could all be just a twisted turn of random events. However, you will agree that it makes much more sense that oil companies are just too greedy to allow anything to eat up their profits, no matter how good for the environment it is. So GM, if you are listening, keep developing the engine in absolute privacy 
or else it might suffer the same fate as PJO's hybrid or worse, Stanley Allen Meyer himself.